The Direza malware, also known as Dire, has been getting attention recently because of reports that it's been targeting Salesforce. So I thought I would do a quick video describing its high-level mechanics. Direza compromises systems in a fairly straightforward manner using very run-of-the-mill social engineering techniques. A potential victim, and I'll draw that victim using a stick figure, using their computer, will receive an email message. And I'll depict that email message with an envelope. And that email message will originate from an attacker. Now this email message will contain either an attachment to malicious content or will contain a link that points to that malicious content. More so, the email will be crafted to make it enticing for the victim to open the attachment or to click on that link. Now, once Direza is installed on a system, it can, among other things, engage in two very malicious behaviors. The first thing that Direza can do is redirect the victim's traffic for a particular websites. So let's say the victim wants to go to salesforce.com. Direza can siphon off the traffic that was meant for salesforce.com and redirect that traffic to a server that was set up by the bad guys en route to the actual Salesforce site. The victim thinks his traffic is going directly to Salesforce when in fact it's actually going to a malicious server first en route to Salesforce. On the flip side, any traffic that goes back to the user from Salesforce will also go through this malicious server. In other words, Salesforce is communicating only with the malicious server and the malicious server in turn is communicating with the victim. Now, normally data going to Salesforce is encrypted and I'll denote that with a lock icon. However, the second really nefarious capability of Direza involves using a technique known as browser hooking, browser hooking. And browser hooking allows Direza to intercept content entered by the user into the web browser before that content is transmitted over the network to a website. And specifically, browser hooking allows this interception to occur before the data is encrypted. After all, there is a moment, albeit brief, between when a user might enter their data into their web browser and when that data is encrypted en route to being transmitted over the network. And as brief as that moment might be, it's still sufficiently long enough for Direza to get in there and steal information. So coupling this idea of traffic redirection with stealing information or stealing credentials prior to their encryption means that the attacker will be able to obtain, directly obtain, the victim's credentials. And those credentials might include things like the victim's username, the victim's password, also any additional two-factor authentication token values. The attacker can leverage this information to impersonate a user and then fraudulently access their account for salesforce.com or really any other SaaS services that might be targeted by Direza. Now, because Direza involves having to redirect traffic to the server in the middle, it does fall into a category of malicious software or malware known as a man in the middle Trojan, a man in the middle Trojan. And this particular class of malware is not new by any stretch of the imagination. Typically, however, man in the middle Trojans will target financial institutions. And up until recently, financial institutions were Direza's main target as well. So if you're concerned about Direza, there are a few things you can do. First of all, administrators can put in IP address restrictions. And they can put those IP address restrictions in place so that Salesforce only accepts connections that originate from within a corporate network or via your company's virtual private network. And what this measure would do is thwart a Direza attack since the attackers in this case will not be permitted to communicate with Salesforce from their own servers because those servers may not meet whatever IP address restrictions have been put in place already. And of course, Salesforce has other ways of achieving the same goal. For example, 
you can do that through SAML based authentication as well. In general though, it's important to have deep visibility into the detailed usage of Salesforce or any SaaS applications you employ for that matter. To the extent that you understand how those applications are being used, you can identify potential threats and create more granular policies. It's also important to keep in mind that most SaaS providers really focus on attacks to their back-end infrastructure, what I like to term backdoor attacks. Backdoor attacks. Typically, however, they will have a lot less protection for what I call front door attacks. And they, in this case, means the SaaS provider. So SaaS providers will have a lot less protection against front door attacks. And these attacks might include things like malware, or malware-based attacks like we saw in the case of Direza. They could also include things like phishing attacks in which a user might get compromised and his password will get stolen. Passwords, of course, can also be compromised or stolen as a result of physical device theft. And yet another example of a front door attack might be a malicious insider. In this case, a legitimate employee might decide to engage in bad behavior like stealing customer data before, let's say, leaving the company. Even though SaaS providers focus more on the back door, if you're an organization using SaaS applications, you ultimately have to be concerned with protecting your information assets against that full spectrum of threats, regardless of whether they come in through the front door or through the back door.